Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be talking about iNav, Horizon Drift and why this may be one of the last times you even hear about it. So that last statement might confuse people, it's like why make a video if this is the last time we may hear about it? Well, the fact is it's something that's in, existed in iNav for quite a long time and it's one of those things that did really need to be fixed. It, was the butt of jokes with people from RG Pilot, but all that can hopefully end now because there is two PRs being worked on in iNav. One of them is at very least mitigating it to an extent where you won't see it. The other one is a new AHRS system, which again aims to eliminate horizon drift. So we'll be looking at that a little bit later on. But first, you may not have even heard of Horizon Drift, especially if you're new to the hobby or new to iNav. So let's discuss what Horizon Drift is, what can cause it, and then we'll look at what is happening with these new developments. So what is Horizon Drift? Well, it is as the name sort of suggests, it's when the artificial horizon in the flight controller drifts. And what that means is that the angle no longer matches the physical horizon. And people do get the wrong idea about this. They think that when we're talking about horizon drift, we just mean the line in the OSD. So you get people flying on DJI saying, well, I don't have the artificial horizon, it doesn't bother me anyway. Or people that just don't enable that OSD element. The fact is, what you see on the OSD is the artificial horizon indicator. All that does is demonstrate what the artificial horizon is doing. So the indicator is not where the problem is, it's where the flight controller believes the horizon to be. So this can impact any self-leveling mode. If the horizon is banked over, if you switch into angle, it will think that that's level and will bank the plane over. This also has obviously impacts for automated flight modes like return to home, position hold, cruise, anything can get affected by horizon drift. So that's why it's pretty important we had decent mitigation and also very clean builds and I'll explain why in a sec. So that's what horizon drift is and as I mentioned it's not just the OSD, it affects all the flight modes in the flight controller. So what causes horizon drift? Well, there are actually two things that can cause horizon drift in iNav. So you can have one of these, both of these, or some people actually don't experience horizon drift or don't notice it. So the first one is through a noisy build. And what I mean by that is that there is excessive electronic or vibrational noise on the actual physical build of the plane. The type of horizon drift that this will create tends to be very exaggerated and all of a sudden you could see the horizon shift up to 45 degrees 90 degrees yeah it could be up down or banked over it will just shift and the problem is that noise is interfering with the gyro so that is what is causing the issue and Sometimes you can see this noise if you have wavy lines going across your screen when you add power to the motor. That is noise coming from the ESC. And a lot of people actually just put um, an LC filter on the cam or VTX leads to clean up that noise when it's much better to clean it up at the ESC and stop the noise even getting into the system. That way it helps the IMU and other components as well that can be affected by noise. The other build component that can affect it is vibration. So if you haven't balanced your propeller and don't trust it when the manufacturer says they're balanced, actually get a balancer and check it yourself and also do a physical check with the motor and propeller spinning just to uh, get the vibration out completely. If you get vibration, you can loosen the prop nut, turn the prop a little bit, tighten it up and see if it gets better or worse. Once you get as little vibration through the airframe as possible and reduce the electrical noise, you shouldn't have problems with the extreme horizon drifts. The other type of horizon drift is caused by gravity. Say for example, we're in a long, slow turn. So where this is commonly seen is in a loiter. So if you've got the plane loitering in the sky, one or two turns, you probably won't even notice it. But after that, it will start accumulating and you'll see the horizon gradually drift. And this is because there's a constant gravitational pull acting on the gyro. So that's the other type, which unfortunately there's nothing really you can do about it. If you 
come out of the loiter and fly straight for a while, it will correct itself. The only thing that we can do for helping those types of drifts is the mitigation. Um, so 5.1 had an update to the, the mitigation code, which worked from 3.0 onwards and did make a, a marked improvement. But going forward, hopefully in INAV 6.0, we won't need to worry about this at all. Because as I mentioned, there are two pull requests active right now that are looking to get rid of Horizon Drift. So the first pull request is this one that's on screen now. And what that is doing is working on the current AHRS and adding a GPS compensation to the gyro. So what that is using is the GPS to try and keep that drift or that's caused by the gravitational pull to an absolute minimum. And it is working well. Mark Hoffman has tested this build and he said that it's a marked improvement over what currently exists in INAV. So this is still using mitigation and it's using a GPS to help with that. If this is the chosen path in INAV 6.0, you, there will be mitigation parameters, but again, the defaults will probably be decided by then, so it should just work out of the box. But if you don't have a GPS or your GPS fails, it will be no different to how it works in 5.1. That's the issue with this PR. But it is getting there and it is looking very positive. The other pull request here by Julio is a complete new AHRS. It's actually based on the RG Pilot DCM AHRS. So with this, there are no mitigation codes. So it's completely new. It's all new math. It doesn't need the, the mitigation stuff. And this has actually been flown by Mark Hoffman, Bonafide Pirate. Uh, they both going to have videos out on this today too so I'll put the links in the video description go and check those out we all fly differently but also testing Leslie Yagin, Marcin Gendros, Sean Underwood, Henrik Brokstra and Jetrell who is a pretty prolific tester for INAV who's been testing on multi-rotors more than fixed wing um, we've all been flying this and yet there is a big improvement there's there's still a bit of work that needs to be done to it this is still a work in progress so what we may see happen depending on how things progress is that the centrifugal force compensation may be what gets put into 6.0 with a look to get the new dcm ahrs in at a later date depends on how it develops the advantage with the new ahrs is that if the gps fails it still works perfectly so that is why this would be the better solution if everything gets ironed out. So I think what I'm going to do now is just show you some flight footage. I've flown this on my AR wing for two weekends running now. And I've also yesterday put it on the F1 and did some higher speed tests on that. So let's take a look. Okay, so first we're in the AR wing. Apologies for the grayscale DVR. It's a fat shark issue with HDOs and HDO2s. Sometimes they record DVR in grayscale and there's no fix, no firmware patch. I've tried different firmwares. Anyway, I've tried to solve the problem. It's there. Sorry about that. Um, so basically what we're doing now is just sitting in a loiter. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this is where we can typically see problems. So the horizon will drift away and you will start to, in extreme cases, lose altitude, even hit the ground. So you can see I've just switched your direction. I've got the uh, your direction on my rudder. So I just switch that just to change direction, see what happens. And you can see, even though the horizon line is a little bit high for what it should be, uh, which is more likely down to my camera angle, um, it's staying pretty level with the horizon. And we're getting a little bit of drift on the altitude, but not a lot at all, to be honest. I have to say that the day that this, well, yesterday when I filmed this, the wind was pretty gusty. It wasn't ideal conditions, so this is actually putting it through some pretty harsh paces. Um, it was inconsistent gusts, and the plane was buffeted about. The flight earlier in the day was actually a lot worse than this. Uh, but you can still see all those uh, knocks are wind gusts but still the, the height is sticking around sort of 318 feet on average 
just varying by two or well up to about four feet in either direction so it's doing pretty well and you can see at this point we've been circling for a while and the horizon line is when it's flying smooth uh, where there's a smooth patch of air it's pretty much level with the horizon the reason it's getting offset is probably because of those bumps and gusts but you can see now it's it's in line with the horizon we've been loitering for quite some time so that is a massive improvement over what the current AHRS does the GPS mitigation AHRS improvements will of course help this out as well but we're back out the loiter you can see we are we are actually turning but I'm pretty sure that's more to do with the target when I hit the switch so now we've switched over to another clip where I'm trying a bit more sort of proximity flying so I'm doing a few rolls you can see exiting the roll the horizon is still pretty good and this is actually where it's not so good at the moment it's is uh, the acrobatic stuff so what we're seeing here is actually not bad results at all um, but you'll see a bit later on where the issue is so after those rolls there's a bit more proximity so I'm trying to keep low to the ground um, sort of banking around things but you can see the horizon is still sticking pretty well um, obviously I could go lower but you know <laughs> we're testing so um, what I'm going to do is fly inverted for a bit now getting the horizon level when you're flying inverted is a bit more tricky it doesn't seem to like being upside down but you can see it's actually tracking the horizon pretty well when it's on it so I do start getting video break up in a sec so I'll flip back over to uh, right side up and then what we're going to do is head back around and I went to do a few more rolls so um, this time we're actually going to spin it a bit so we get a few more rotations uh, to see how that goes so yeah still need to get lower but it was a bit bumpy so here we go there's a I think I do three or four complete rolls and coming out you can see that the the horizon is off that was expected with how it currently works but it's come back fairly quick and I'm in angle now with no real adverse effects you can see I'll, I'll get hands off in a sec and it's just flying straight and level obviously the bouncing at this point again is from the wind so next we're gonna have a look at the F1 now the first one I did was another position hold now this plane is pretty much on basic settings I've not actually done a lot with it I did do an auto tune but I forgot to save it so I took so um, basically the roll rate and the pitch rate is stock still so it's 180 degrees per second and 90 degrees per second the feed forward I did take from um, the video and I also tuned the PI and D slightly because uh, they needed reducing so the PI and D is reduced slightly but this plane uh, it does suffer from a few issues and bouncing like you just saw it can happen even in manual with this plane I need to tune it a bit more so this is not an ideal platform and you can see from the video it is a little bit noisy as well but the horizon is actually holding pretty nicely and when you consider we're actually loitering around 85 miles an hour that's not a bad thing at all and the altitude again is sticking within say eight feet so there's not a lot of um, not a lot of deviation there despite the you know not an ideal plane for this and the conditions so I did just stick it into return to home to see what it will do and again you can see it was quite an abrupt turn but I've not really got any smoothing or anything this is all default and it started flying home as it should um, and back into acro and what we're going to do next is try a, uh, a long uh, banked turn now the idea was to have a shallow bank but I did go a bit steeper than I wanted and the reason for this was I wanted to see how the AHI handled a banked turn 
at a high speed so you can see we just sort of hit 160 at one point and the AHI was pretty good I think. So that's just a couple of tests that I've performed with this plane and the AR wing so you can see that there is an improvement there but anyway let's wrap this up. So there you go guys, I hope you found this video useful. Even though hopefully in the future we won't have to deal with Horizon Drift, it's still worth taking the advice about the clean builds, making sure you have capacitors on the ESC to get rid of electrical noise, also making sure your prop and everything is balanced, and if you do want to soft mount your flight controller using sort of 3M thick double-sided tape is a good option, that's quite strong, quite sticky. I used the Gorilla Tape in the F1 and for that, where it gets quite warm inside, it wasn't really ideal. So I've actually got that screwed down as well. But I digress, this is something very positive happening to INAV, but I just had to share with you. I mean, 6.0 won't be out till December, so there's still a bit of time to wait, but everything is looking very positive and this is a very good, very big change. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, found it useful. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button and the bell icon. That will help get this video out to more people, but also give you alerts for when I have new content out that you may find interesting. Thank you very much to all the subscribers, Patreons, anyone who's uh, donated. Uh, appreciate it all. Thank you very, very much, guys. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them.